in the middle of downtown Los Angeles is a hidden treasure that you would never expect to find in the heart of Chinatown. We're going in here to meet Carl, who is quickly becoming a legend in Los Angeles. How you doing, Carl? How you doing? Good to see you. I'm Eric. How, welcome to Velveteria, Eric. Now tell me, Carl, what is the Velveteria? Velveteria is the epicenter of art. It's the greatest art museum in the history of the world. Everything known to man is captured on velvet, hidden here in the Velveteria. Now, the minute someone says a velvet painting or a velvet Elvis, our mind goes to a different place. Why is that? Well, because velvet painting, it invites you in to the luxuriant nap of the velvet and the light when it hits the nap of the velvet and the color just bounces and it becomes a 3D effect and so people just love them. It's relatable and everybody can understand it. You don't have to be a nose up in the air art snob, you know, and oh, this brush stroke means this and this means that. It's all baloney. And the art world really hates us because we are tearing the pants off the art world and the art critics and they don't have anything there, man. They all look like Ken dolls, these guys. There's no cojones, baby. I have guys working down in Mexico. We are like the new Medicis of the modern Tijuana Renaissance, bringing velvet painting back as the dominant art form of the 21st century. So look out, world. Over here in the corner, we have some of our oldest paintings like these are from Japan in the early 1900s and then here's a Wahini from Tahiti. Now hold on, hold on. Oldest painting 1902 in Japan. Are you telling me that velvet paintings were happening in 1902? Yes they were and these, you can look at this one closer, they cut and dyed and shaved the velvet so it's totally different than anything we think of you know from the border or Tahiti or stuff like that. I, I would never have guessed, you th when you think of velvet paintings, you think about the 1960s and 1970s, but you're telling me that this was going on in Japan as early as 1902. Right, it sure was. Now what do we have over here? We have Miley Cyrus. Wow, look at that! Miley Cyrus? Yep. You would never expect to see a Miley Cyrus velvet painting. Well, we've got to keep up with the times and we get people who are iconic and, you know, uh, compelling. Miley Cyrus is definitely one of today's artists who deserves to be immortalized on velvet. Now tell me this, Carl. What's behind the pink velvet curtain? Behind the pink curtain is the whole show, man. Everything. So this the is whole it. world. No, this is just the beginning. This is a preliminary bouts. Oh man. Yeah. Lead the way. Okay, let's go. You ready? Oh my Wow. <laughs> this is wild. Tell me what we have here. Well, we part of our show Clown Tacular, we have Clit Kiss, the great Brock band as our centerpiece and and so we have like everybody here from Kenny Rogers to Sinatra to Willie Nelson's a standard on velvet, Jimi Hendrix, Cher, Stevie Wonder, the Rat Pack, Springsteen, uh, Roy Orbison. Is that Sinatra down That's there? Frank Sinatra. And I love this painting because the the spotlight is right on his bald spot, you know, over his toupee. So it's that <laughs> is fantastic. Now, who is that right above Frank? That's Tempest Storm, the great uh, burlesque queen of the '50s and '60s, who's one of a, a good friend of the Velveteria. We're great friends of the burlesque world. Velvet painting seems to me like it's all about a party. Yeah, it's all about well, it's about a party. It could be a party, or it could be about sadness, or it could be about anything in life, really. Well, let's keep looking. Tell me what we have over here. Let's. Well, this is our, our tiki area where we have some of our finest paintings from the uh, late fit. Well, from the 1930s actually, all the way through the 60s. Some of these paintings, and um, and like this is um, this is Marlon Brando's wife from Mutiny on the Bounty. Wow. On black velvet. This painting up here was one from Edgar Lee Tigg, who I spoke about before. This one was in Paris all last summer in the museum there. Wow. And it, I got it from an old retired dentist out who's living out in the desert in California. He's living in a Dodge conversion van. He had no money except he had 200 velvet paintings. So we bought his whole collection. And this one ended up going to a museum in Paris instead of going to the dump out in Riverside. 
here I have a section I call my California kings and queens, people that were very important in California. Here we have our great talk show host, Jimmy Kimmel. Fantastic. Next to Hugh Hefner, Marilyn Monroe, John Houston. There's Dolomite. Dolomite, Rudy Ray Moore, Rudy the Rudy human Moore. tornado. Human tornado. Do you know any of his raps? Uh, <laughs> I don't have um, the signifying monkey down oh. by memory yet. Hold on, let me see. I got, I, I, <laughs> you, you got one. Here huh? we go. I don't want no dilapidated, knee slapping, cross eyed, bow legged, pigeon toed son of a gun messing with me. <laughs> hey, you know, uh, King Annie and Jimmy Reed. And I don't, Amy. I haven't got that one down yet, but tell me, yeah, we got, yeah. so we got Dolomite. Who else? And well, we have the Three Stooges here. Fantastic. Dallas Reigns. Absolutely. No one does the weather better than Dallas Reigns. He's the man. With a and, oh, Vincent Price and Peter Lorre. Vincent Price with Peter Lorre's head. Nowhere else in the world can you go and find a painting of Vincent Price and Peter Lorre above Snoop Doggy Dog and Sylvester Stallone. Right. This is a veritable gallery of awesomeness. <laughs> well, thank you. We have over here named Ralph Burke Tyree, who was one of the greatest velvet painters in the history of man. He is a World War II Marine, and he captured the beauty of these people, and these animals he did were just unbelievable. Now, you're telling me that even though people associate velvet paintings with the 60s and 70s, World War II era artists were painting on velvet. Yes, they were, many of them. They f discovered in the South Pacific the velvet paintings, and they uh, took them up. You know, the same guys who painted on the airplanes, and uh, the military had a very big role in velvet painting. And, and now tell me, now, we got a Michael Jackson wall here. Yes, we had um, a show which we continue to have called From Botox to Detox to Surgical Evolution of Michael Jackson. So you see the various stages of Michael Jackson's career. They're really great paintings, and um, that landed us on The Tonight Show. I'm looking around at all of this stuff, and there's one thing that is de definitely missing. I have not yet seen one Velvet Elvis. Well, you go around the corner, you're going to see the Hall of Elvis. The Hall of Elvis. The Hall of Elvis. Is this like the mother load of all velvet paintings? <laughs> it's called taking care of business, baby. Wow. So this, it's literally, when you say it's the Hall of Elvis, it is literally the hallway with a bunch of velvet Elvises. Yes, it is. Here we have Elvis in his various stages of uh, glory from, from when he was uh, heavily sideburned in the 70s to uh, when they had to sneak him across the border, him and Priscilla, because they had to paint him like uh, Native Americans because Elvis Presley Enterprises was upset about that Velvet Elvis is coming into the country so much. Then Elvis got a perm here, and that probably led to his downfall. I don't think he appeared in public with this perm too much. Nobody really remembers that. I don't remember Elvis. Yeah, did yeah. Elvis really have a perm? Yeah, yeah, he, he did have a perm. They, they captured dead. it. That's why, that's why he's crying so much. Now back <laughs> here is a hound dog. Yeah, here's yeah, nothing but a hound dog. We got a hound dog. Wow. This is, this is really every version of a velvet Elvis known to man is here in the hallway of Elvis. What, what are we looking at next, Carl? The piece de resistance, the black light room. This is unbelievable. <laughs> Here we are in a room, and it's the black light room, and all of the walls are surrounded with just glow-in-the-dark, black light, velvet paintings. So basically, People come in. How does this work? What do we do in the, in the black light room? <laughs> well, you just come in here and uh, sit in a beanbag chair and just kind of soak it all in and uh, get your mind uh, psychedelicized, as they said. I've imagined things like this before, Carl, but I never thought I would see it in real life. Well, now you're here, and you know it's, you're going to leave this place a changed man. The Velveteria Velvet Painting Museum, hidden in Chinatown in the heart of Los Angeles. It, uh, I think admission is $10. $10. And when are you open? We're open every day from 11 to 6, except for Tuesday. And it is definitely worth the price of admission. This is something you got to see 
to believe. Today has definitely been one of the most interesting and unique visits I've ever had. And I'd like to thank Carl of the Velveteria for making it all possible. And I hope you'll all join us next time on Hidden Treasures of California.